All right, guys. Well, um, welcome back to Remote Learning. So this uh, this video is meant to kind of show you guys um, your multiple choice section, uh, the final that's going to be next week. I'm not going to show you the actual questions because that would be dumb to do. We don't want to do that, right? Um, but I'm going to kind of look at these, kind of review a couple things, kind of show you some stuff to be aware of and try to give you as uh, much help as I can without uh, completely giving you anything away. So this video is just meant to alert you to some stuff to put on your one page notes and just kind of be aware of as you're learning. Now, the multiple choice has 32 questions, right? It's going to be like a part one, a part two, and it and it it's going to kind of start off like it's going to be all over the place, right? It's going to be uh, it's going to be I mean, it's the entire year, but it definitely is going to start off in uh, statistics. Like, how are you at finding the mean, median, and mode of stuff? How are you with doing statistics? How are you at reading histograms, at understanding what a histogram is and how they work? You know, when this is like, a, you know, two people voted for, you know, num option number three and four people voted for this and how are these insta histograms how are they at helping you kind of discern some data and answer some questions another thing you'll definitely see on the test is box and whisker plots remember those where you have your minimum over here your maximum there your median is in the middle you have quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, 25% of the data in between each thing. And kind of answering some questions there about some box and whisker plots, you're definitely going to see that. Now, along with statistics, you're going to be seeing two-way tables, three-way tables, stuff like that. So uh, these are always tricky to draw, right? So like three-way tables, they kind of look like this. You got, you know, one, two, three sections. And, you know, do you like to fish? Do you not like to fish? You know, and then your totals. And then um, while you're fishing, do you like boating? You know, or no boating? And then your totals. I can't spell for the life of me. And then your totals. And let's say, you know, 20 say this and 14 say that and 35 say this and 2 say that. And so you got to total these up and answer some questions based off of those totals. Like 20, so 34 people like to fish, 37 people don't like to fish. Whereas 55 people love to boat, whereas 16 people do not. And your total adds them all up. So those two-way tables for sure, you're going to be seeing stuff like that. You're going to be solving equations as well. How are you guys at solving equations? You know, 2 times x plus 1 plus 3 times x plus 2 equals 20. Whew, let's make it an x. Why not? Just for the fun of it. How are you at solving these equations? You know, 2x plus 2 plus 3x plus 6 equals 20x. Combine like terms. And then solve the equation for x, subtract x, divide by stuff. How are you at solving equations and interpreting? How are you at writing them, too? How are you at taking information like $6 per hour? You know, $6 per, per hour and $200 in tips. And in one week, you made $435. You know, that would be an equation of $6 per hour plus $200 for a total of $435 in tips, I mean, in, a, in a week's work. So you're gonna see definitely stuff like that. Um, and again, a lot with equations, inequalities as well. Remember compound inequalities, where you have like uh, 2x plus five has gotta be greater than <clears throat> 21, but less than 35. And can you solve compound inequalities where you subtract five from both sides and divide by two to both sides and answer questions like that. Um, and along with that, do you understand what a compound inequality looks like? You know, so if you get the answer where x is greater than or equal to seven, can you take a line and can you graph that uh, where you have, you know, 
seven, eight, nine, six, five, and that's a closed circle. It's greater than, it's going to the right. Do you understand what those answers mean? Like, and, and if that is that case, like can eight or nine be an answer? Can nine be an answer to X is greater than, I can't even write again, answer to X is greater than seven, but can two, you know, two can't be because it's not greater than seven and stuff like that. Sorry about that. Had to hit pause for a quick second to get the second section of the test. Uh, so the second half of it, or the remaining multiple choice. So again, so there's, there's actually only 31 problems. So we'll just kind of keep going from here on things you'll see and uh, things to kind of be aware of. Um, and I think we finished on compound inequalities. Like, for example, like what does, you know, negative 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than... Uh, five look like on a number line. So like on a number line where you have five, negative four, x is going to be in between it. And so we're going to have an open circle here and a closed circle there, but also like or inequalities like x is uh, greater than or equal to negative four. But uh, Gosh, I don't even know. Sorry, that's got to be actually less than or equal to negative 4, and x is greater than 3. So on your graph, you're going to see at negative 4 and closed circle going to the right, and that 3 and open circle going to the left. Remember, we sounded like seals or or kind of stuff like that. So be aware you're going to have some compound inequalities in there. And then just your geometry vocab vocabulary, like like a ray, you know, how do you name this ray through the points E, F? Well, you know, this is, this is ray E, F, right? It can't be ray F, E, it's ray E, F. What does it mean to be coplanar on a, on a plane where you have A and B and C? Is C coplanar to A and B? Um, when two lines intersect, where do they intersect at? Do they intersect at a plane or a point? When two planes intersect, you know, when you have one wall intersect with another wall, you know, it intersects on a line rather than a point. And, uh, and then going along those lines, the uh, angle, I mean, sorry, segment addition postulate saying, you know, if this whole section here is like x plus 1 and this is, this is, you know, double x plus 3, <clears throat> and this right here is uh, x minus 2, and you know that this entire length here is 45, can you write an equation where you take all of these and add them up and make them equal 45 and figure out what x is to find out what each space should be? Um, just different things like that, some more compound inequalities. You know, remember a function, remember a function is a, is a line, and then if you, if you do a vertical line test and you go across that function and you only hit it once, then it's a function, right? That's a function and, and what it means for that. And then, uh, like, what does this dot right here, f of x equals 4, you know, that means at that moment, that's when it's hitting the 4. And what does, what does a function mean? And then how are you at filling in tables? How are you at being given an X and a Y table? And say it's going up 2, 4, blank, 8, 12, and, you know, 10, 20, 30, blank, 40. You know, what are these blanks going to be? Um, you know, and just looking at patterns and filling them in and trying to figure out which ones are functions and which is not a function. You want to review that. What is a function? What's the difference between a function and not a function? And just answering that question, by the way, 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, 10, 20, 30, uh, 40, this should actually be 50. Um, so you're going to see stuff like that. Um, do you remember function notation, right, where you have like f of x equals x plus 2 and g of x equals 2x? So what does f of 3 equal? And what does g of uh, 4 equal? So you go to the f function, you plug in a 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. Go to g, plug in a 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Function notation, right? Um, 
and, and can you write equations like we've been doing? Uh, you know, different equations. Y equals mx plus b and ax plus by equals c and y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Can you write equations when you're given a slope um, and a point? Can you tell me what the difference is between them and interpret what equations are saying, right? And then uh, just just stuff like that, really, guys. Just functions, lots of equations, statistics, things like that.